stretch and California Chrome comes roaring home with Arrowgate coming after him on the outside. A furlong to run. California Chrome put to the test. Arrowgate full out. Can he stick with it? California Chrome. Arrowgate still coming. California Chrome. Arrowgate steals the show in the Breeders' Cup Classic. This is Saratoga Track and Ultra Larry Colmas, and you're listening to the Paddock Pass on 104.5 The Team. Hello and welcome, friends, to the Paddock Pass. Of course, this is your home for all of horse racing here at 104.5theteam.com, and we are upon the week that we've all been waiting for since the Arrowgate defeat of California Chrome in the Breeders' Cup Classic. It is the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. That'll go as race 12 this weekend on the 12 race card at Gulfstream Park. Post time is 5 40 p.m., and this is the race that everybody has been talking about this week. We just came back. We'll touch on last week's outcomes of the Eclipse Awards quickly, and then we will jump right into this race. I have a few long shots I like. I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to play in this race, and of course, we'll instill the help of NBC's Lafitte Pinkai later in the program. He'll tell us exactly what he likes in this Pegasus World Cup, and then we'll go over a few of the outcomes in the Eclipse Awards. Let's start right there with the Eclipse Awards. Let's look back to those. They were Saturday night, last Saturday at Gulfstream Park, and a lot of stuff I was kind of interested in, I was actually shocked at some of the outcomes. Not about who won, but how they won those specific categories. Let's start with the local connection. Local trainer Chad Brown from Mechanicville takes down Todd Pletcher and Mark Cassie and Bob Baffert and all of these great trainers to win Trainer of the Year. Now, ultimately, I was a little worried about how the voters would actually vote on this because if you look at the Heisman Trophy, I said this on last week's show as well when we had TVG's Andrew Champagne on, I was a little worried that voters would get lost in how good Bob Baffert was in the big races this year, including the wins with Arrowgate and the Travers and, of course, taking down California Chrome in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Ultimately, the voters proved me wrong in being a skeptic, and they chose Chad, which is the correct way to go here. Ultimately, the margin of victory is what shocked me here. Not Chad winning, but how he won in such impressive fashion. I believe it was like 220 votes to 25 or something like that for Bob Baffert second. Absolutely unbelievable. The local connection, Chad Brown, gets it done. He actually joined me and Roger Weiland on Big Board Sports earlier in the week. And you can, of course, check that out on the YouTube page. That's at 104.5 The Team. And he explained to us that it was an emotional kind of reunion because it finally is the culmination of all of the hard work that he's put in over the last 10 or so years when he went on his own. And being there this summer at Saratoga, watching him get a 1,000 wins, breaking the trainer uh, record there at Saratoga, you saw that there was kind of a different look in his eye this year. A lot of things went well for him. Horses stayed healthy, and they showed up in these big races. So ultimately, big congrats to all the Chad supporters out there. Big congrats to him and his family. We're rooting for him, and that was ultimately the culmination of a great year and this might be the start of something here fellas this could be something that kicks him right into gear and I think the next place we might see Chad is in the winner circle at Churchill Downs taking down the Kentucky Derby that is another notch he is looking forward to in his belt big congrats to Chad of course you can hit me up on Twitter at 104.5 Mariano or on Facebook as well let's look let's move on to another portion of the Eclipse Awards that I, again, wasn't shocked about the result, but the actual margin that was there. Horse of the Year was up for grabs. Arrowgate came on strong late, beating California Chrome in the Breeders' Cup Classic, having a new stakes record as well in the Travers. And again, California Chrome had the better year overall. If you looked at Dubai World Cup, TVG Pacific Classic, he had a lot of big wins this year. So ultimately, if you were looking at the entire year, it had to go to California Chrome. The real question then was going to be, how close would the margin 
B, because I, Arrow, or Arrowgate was getting a lot of late love because of the, the last two races that he had in the Travers and the Classic, taking down California Chrome. So how much would the voters put on the head-to-head matchup? And we got our answer. It was California Chrome, and it was not close. Another margin that was upwards of 200 down to about 30 votes for Arrowgate. I also was quite shocked that there was voters who did vote. And and don't get me wrong. People might go, kill me for this, and that's understandable. Songbird had a fantastic year. Absolutely fantastic year. But she did not deserve any votes in this. This category was for Arrowgate and California Chrome. Had nothing to do with Songbird. I, I'm almost upset enough that if anyone who had these votes should have those votes taken away if you weren't voting for California Chrome or Arrowgate. So ultimately, California Chrome gets it done and wins in impressive fashion. I don't know if this one should have been so blatant and so out there. I do agree California Chrome was had the better year, but... Arrowgate beating him, there's got to be something for the head-to-head matchup. So ultimately, it, I think it should have been closer. If it was 150 to 100, okay, I get it. California Chrome had the better year. But you have to give some substance for a horse that on the track, at his home track at California Chrome, he came over there and he beat him. So ultimately, I know Arrowgate's based out there as well, So, but California Chrome has done so much at that track and had such a jump on Arrowgate for so many years. Ultimately, it was a minor upset, and Arrowgate took down California Chrome. Congrats to the connections of California Chrome, Art Sherman, and of course, the owners of California Chrome, LLC. Victor Espinosa is on quite a run the past few years, and we'll see how it turns out this weekend. And let's move on to this weekend, the $12 million Pegasus World Cup. This is going to be, I've been looking at this program ever since it came out a few days ago, and I'm trying to figure out, is there any way that someone can come up and beat these two horses? You're playing pick fours, pick sixes, whatever it may be. You're honestly just looking at these two horses. And if you're try- if you want to make it a little tougher on yourself, you're trying to figure out which one to single. And ultimately... This race changed on Monday afternoon when they drew the post positions because when you, at a mile and an eighth at Gulfstream Park, the last place you wanted to go, and I watched the coverage online, Art Sherman was talking about they wanted to be somewhere in the middle, five through eight, something like that. Same thing with Bob Baffert and John Mont Farms. They wanted somewhere down inside. As the last time we saw Arrowgate draw from the one post, he just, you know, He did okay, let's put it that way, breaking the track record in the Travers and ultimately running a sub-two-minute mile and a quarter. Absolutely unbelievable. Ultimately, this race changed because when California Chrome drew the 12 and Aerograde drew the 1, it is almost like a handicap race. The old-school handicap races where they would put all of the better horses in such tough post positions to kind of give everybody a chance. And if I'm a trainer of another horse... Other than these two, I now know that I have somewhat a little, and I'm not talking about this isn't like a 10% jump, a little bit, maybe a a percentage point or two for each of these horses to have a chance now. And this ultimately might make this a better betting race if you're a gambler out there because now you get, even they had the, uh, the odds maker on. XBTV earlier this week and he was talking about how how much stock he put into this post draw where it was again just little percentage points because California Chrome he had originally even money now was your six to five morning line favorite Arrowgate was supposed to be six to five a click up to go to seven to five ultimately when you break this race down it's going to come down to these two Arrowgate Probably going to be right around that 6-5, to 7-5 five, to five number. I honestly think he's going to go off as the favorite. If, if it's even money, I'll take it. But I think Arrowgate will be your post-time favorite when this race goes off at 540 on Saturday. California Chrome probably going to be 7-5, to 6-5 to five maybe as your second choice on the outside. I'm When I broke this race down... I found the only way I think I'm going to make money. I'm going to play, obviously, pick four, pick fours and pick sixes with these two. But when I get to just handicapping this race, I'm going to break it down with some dollar super effective. So I'm going to throw Arrowgate and California Chrome in the first two spots 
So it will give me 112, 112. And then I'm looking for some prices, but some logical horses I think can run third and fourth. The number four, Noble Bird, early speed, Julian Le Peru from Mark Cassie, the finalist, another finalist for top trainer this year, has been really good down at Gulfstream Park. Had a rough trip in the Clark. I know I understand breaking lucky, ran well in that race. Also will be a horse that we'll be looking at at some point. But I think this horse is going to be close to the lead as long as they don't push. Worst case, if he goes and Arrowgate lets him go, he'll be just fine. I honestly think that Noble Bird has a chance to run in the money. We'll see how that works out as well. The other horse I'm going to go to in these supers is going to be the seven, Shaman Ghost, who upset Frosted in the Woodward at Saratoga, or when Frosted was just much the best in all of those races prior. He comes up and beats him at Saratoga. Again, had a rough trip in the Clark in the last time out. Ran third behind Breaking Lucky, but 20 to 1 is an enticing price. Jimmy Jerkins always has his horses ready to run in big races, and Jose Ortiz isn't a bad rider at all. We will take him and our Superfectas. The other two I'm going to go to are the nine Keen Ice taking down American Pharaoh last year, or two years ago rather, in the Travers. We'll add him with a little bit of value at 12 to 15 to 1. And of course, we will go with the 10 breaking lucky, 25 to 1, looking for a little bit of a price to bring us to our Superfecta. So that's 112 with 112 over 47910. That will cost you $24. Take it to the window when you go this weekend. And of course, we will go to the phone lines now to go to our NBC expert, Lafitte Pinkai. Now, Lafitte, the Pegasus World Cups this weekend, obviously the rematch between California Chrome and Arrowgate is the story. But before we get into that this weekend, let's look back to last weekend at Gulfstream Park. They had the Eclipse Awards, and our local trainer, Chad Brown, took down Trainer of the Year. I'm not so much surprised that he won Lafitte, but the margin of victory between him and Bob Baffert, did that surprise you at all? You know, Bob had a great year and a great run uh, and, and winning a third consecutive Breeders' Cup Classic. I think he won two Breeders' Cup races, did Bob Baffert, but it was this was Chad Brown's time, and I think the voters saw it in the in that same saw it the same. Um, I think that Chad should have probably won in 2014. Uh, it's an incredibly powerful stable. He has the support of some of the most significant owners in the game and to, to accomplish what he's accomplished at such a young age. I don't know that he's 40 years old yet. I don't think he's 40 years old yet. Many trainers don't hit their peak until they're past 50. It's scary to think how much damage Chad Brown's going to do, have done by the time it's all said and done, and how many Eclipse Awards he'll have on his mantle at home. Incredible trainer, and I think it was really nice to see some emotion from Chad Brown on stage, a guy that I think normally keeps things pretty close to his chest. You saw him kind of get choked up with his family out there, and it kind of made him a little bit more. more. It was, it was a side of him I don't think a lot of us as racing fans have seen. So let's look at Horse of the Year, because another big margin of victory there as well between California Chrome and Arrowgate. I, I was talking on last week's show, Lafitte, almost as if we talked about the Heisman Trophy, where Lamar Jackson had the great season to, to start and all the way through the end, but didn't have a great end of the year. Deshaun Watson comes and has a great end of the year. Same thing with California Chrome winning the Dubai World Cup and having a great summer and then Arrowgate winning the Travers and then defeating him in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Are you surprised by the margin of victory in that one, California Chrome winning by as much as he did? Not at all. I think it's an overall body of work uh, versus two stellar, historically good performances by Arrowgate. That's taking nothing away from Arrowgate. The, the simple fact is that he had sortions at one point. He got sent back to the farm and didn't return to Bob Baffert's stable until the spring, and he got started very late. I, I think his, his career debut was after California Chrome had already won the Dubai World Cup. Uh, the fact that Chrome did it from start to finish, uh, the fact that he was second to Arrowgate, it's not like he finished up the track. Arrowgate beat him by a half a length in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Chrome was that close to a perfect season. While we refer to the Breeders' Cup as horse racing's world and championships, it's not the end-all, be-all. It's like a final exam. There's more weight in terms of award voting, and because it's the last time we've seen these horses on the track, what have you done for me lately? But examining California Chrome's overall body of work versus Arrowgate's late summer and fall surge, um, I thought it was a pretty easy choice uh, for the voters. Talking to NBC's Lafitte Pinkai, you can follow him on Twitter at Lafitte Pinkai TV. So, Lafitte, let's look now to the Pegasus World Cup this weekend. 
I'm actually interested on how exactly this race came about. I know there, racing kind of has this dull time between the end of the Breeders' Cup and then the start of the prep races. How did we get to this point with the Pegasus World Cup? The beauty of it is that we're talking about horse racing, and horse racing is going to be on a national, in front of a national audience for a 90-minute broadcast. You're right. I mean, horse racing is year-round, but nothing important happens for the most part. In January, you have the Eclipse Awards. The two-year-olds just turned three. You can start talking about the road to the Kentucky Derby, but chances are the horses you're talking about in May aren't the same horses that we're talking about in January. You plot this race at the end of the month. You add this $12 million purse. It's, it's the, the shareholders that have put up the money, 12 different entities that put up $1 million apiece to reserve a slot in the starting gate. For a while, it didn't look like we were going to get 12 horses, even though all 12 slots in the gates had been purchased. Now we do have a full field. It, it's a new concept. It's cutting edge. It's not perfect. It needs to be tweaked. Uh, Jack Wolf, who's been very closely with the evolution of the Pegasus World Cup, has already added that yeah, their changes are coming. We might see it at Santa Anita next year where it could host a bigger crowd. Maybe you see a change in distance from a mile and an eighth to a mile and a quarter. Not sure. But what's important is to celebrate this one. Because if not for the Pegasus World Cup, California Chrome would be retired. Arrowgate would be turned out, pointing towards a summer-fall campaign. And the conversation would be a Don handicap that while we are going to miss the Don, and while it's respected and rich in history, the subplot would be how bad the older horse division is. The subplot would be the fact that Gunrunner was not allowed to enter Gulfstream Park because of the equine herpes virus breakout in Louisiana. And the fact that the two best older horses, how great it would have been had we been able to see Chrome and Arrowgate go head-to-head, and we're going to get a chance to see that in on Saturday, which otherwise, without this event, wouldn't happen in a million years. So, Lafitte, you actually mentioned it part in that answer, but my question, the next one I had for you was, the distance of a mile and an eighth at Gulfstream Park as opposed to a mile and a quarter, do you feel as if that will change at some point in the near future, or do you feel like a mile and an eighth is perfect for the milers and then the classic distance? You know, I, the mile and an eighth, um, to me, it's, it's a prep race distance. All of our major prep races for the mile and a quarter Kentucky Derby are run at a mile and an eighth. I, I'm not sure exactly why the decision was made to go with this particular distance. It's The Pegasus isn't going to be an American classic because it's not part of the Triple Crown, but if the, the those who came up with the idea with Frank Stronach and Melinda and everybody close to him, if the idea is to make this a very important race, the richest race in the world, a classic-type race, and I think it should be run at the American Classic Racing Distance at a mile and a quarter. And the fact is, the fact that it's at a mile and an eighth at Gulfstream, California Chrome is really, really injured from a trip standing at and it, from a trip standpoint. And he's going to lose some ground. They literally break on the turn. There's very little real estate in between the starting gate and the first turn, the way the track is configured here at Gulfstream Park for mile and an eighth racing. Yeah, so let's look into the race, Lafitte, because you obviously mentioned California Chrome grabs the 12 post, Arrowgate inside. The last time we saw Arrowgate in the one post, he set a stakes record and a track record at Saratoga. Do you really feel that Arrowgate has the upper hand now because he's inside as opposed to uh, California Chrome being in the 12 hole? It's night and day how much better the rail is than the 12. It's not perfect. I think Judd Mott, Mike Smith, and Bob Baffert would have rather maybe the three hole, maybe the four hole, when you're down along the inside Arrowgate, sometimes he's a little sluggish leaving the starting gate. If that's the case, he has to worry about other jockeys out there that all they've been reading is these headlines that it's a two-horse race. And if other jockeys can go out there and race ride Mike Smith from the inside, if he's a little bit tardy getting this ride, as he has been in several of his races, that's a concern. But I'd much rather have the one than the 12. Victor Espinosa, in a, in a perfect world, I think the best he can hope for is being maybe three and a half, four lengths wide, which isn't the end of the world. He won the Dubai World Cup from post 11 going a mile and a quarter. He was out in the clear. Some say he's a much better racehorse when he's out in the clear. But in that case in Dubai with the saddle slipping and losing all that ground, yeah, he won, he won easily, but he wasn't facing Arrowgate. California Chrome had everything his own way in the Breeders' Cup Classic. If you want to go ahead and criticize Victor Espinosa's ride, I'll listen to that. Had everything his own way in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and Arrowgate still beat him. And now you're looking at a situation where he's giving Arrowgate length at the very start. All right, Lafitte, i got to put you on the spot now. We, you, we say it's a two-horse race. Do you see anybody else? If not, who wins the race between Arrowgate and California Chrome this weekend? Arrowgate. 
the, the torch has been passed and it's sad and speaks, I think, to the part of me that will be rooting for California Brooks. It's been such a great story. It's been great watching Mark Sherman campaign this champion and the amazing job that he's done with him when he returned from Europe and he had lost 150 pounds. A lot of horses would have waved the white flag. I mean, a lot of people never thought they'd see California Brooks, uh, California Brooks race again. Sherman taking his time, getting him back at Los Alamitos and cultivating him into this machine. It would, it would sadden me to see him lose the last two races of his career because I think it would have an impact on his legacy. Strictly handicapping, looking at this race on paper, I, I, I'd like to be like Arrow to be California Chrome. And I'd be saying otherwise if California Chrome had a better post and it was Arrow stuck out there on the outside. This is strictly not necessarily a matter of I just think Arrow a better horse than California Chrome. Trip handicapping tells me that Arrow Gate, this race is tailor made for him. California Chrome. If you're looking for a price to throw in your exotics, really like Shaving Ghost with Jimmy Jerkins. His last two races, both at a mile and an eighth, both grade one races. He beat Broxton when Broxton was supposed to be an absolute clock in the Woodward at Saratoga, and he ran third in the Clark. It looks like a dull third at first glance, but he made this big extended run. He lost some ground. The track was favoring speed. I'm expecting a big effort from the uh, the house horse, the Frank Strong home, Shaving Ghost. NBC's Lafitte Pinkai. Again, you can follow him on Twitter at Lafitte Pinkai TV. You can catch him this weekend on NBC's broadcast of the Pegasus World Cup. That's from 4.30 to 6 o'clock on Saturday. Lafitte, thanks for giving us some time, man. Best of luck this weekend, and we hope to talk to you again soon. Great stuff, Brian. Anytime. Appreciate it, my friend. Enjoy it. Thank you, Lafitte. Thank you for joining us, of course, from Gulfstream Park. Everything you need to know about the Pegasus World Cup this weekend, make sure you go to the window. Of course, you can follow me. I'll be tweeting out picks all afternoon on Saturday. That's at 104.5 Mariano. If I'm, hopefully we can make some money this weekend, guys. I know we're just ultimately waiting for this rematch. I'm going to sit back, play my tickets, and just watch the greatness that will be Arrowgate and California Chrome. Of course, Chrome for the last time. Thank you for listening to the Paddock Pass. Of course, I am your host, the closer, Brian Mariano, and we'll see you in the Paddock.